Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today, I just want to quickly run through what is the GFF3 file format, uh, what it contains, why do we use it, how do we use it, and lastly, how to import them into R. So there'll be three main chapters in the video, some short introduction about what it is, why it is structured in such a way, and where do we use it. And then we're going to go into in depth into the structure of a GFF3 format, uh, basically the directive, the column one to column nine, and some of the, the region information that you will actually find inside the GFF file. So lastly, I just want to show you a very quick example of how do you, how can you um, manually import a GFF3 file into our studio in case you want to run a certain kind of analysis uh, that is suitable for your analysis and so on. So again, I'm not gonna run through the sh whole analysis pipeline and use it in let's say the sec 2 pipeline that uses GFF3, but rather just roughly want to run through the file structure. So first of all, uh, GF3, GFF3 and GTF is slightly different where GFF3 is more like a um, a better version of GF GTF so that it's newer, I think is more acceptable in most of the file format. Uh, but of course, it depends on your use case and what, what, what are the actual library that you're running that require what kind of file. So even GFF3 itself has multiple versions of it. Uh, there are some are official and some are non-official. So just some basic definition, which I actually get, got it from uh, Learn Gene Core Bio at NYU. So GFF3 is a tab delimited file, text file that's whole information, any and every features. Okay, remember the word features that can be applied to a nucleic acid or protein sequences. So it contains everything from CDS, microRNA, binding domains, ORIF, and more that can be handled by this format. It's a way of recording it. Okay, so why do we need a GFF is because um, annotation itself is very messy, especially when you're dealing with human genome, there are things like alternative splicing. So a gene, uh, even on the same region, can contain multiple features and multiple ways of how a genes can go together. So in this case, an exon is a feature, an ORF is a feature that might be part of the gene, but they're not whole gene. So we have to have a way to manually classify them. And we have to do it in such a way that a computer can understand how to filter, subset, group by, summarize, and so on. So it has to be easily handled by the computer and efficiently to be handled by a computer. So you realize that GFF3 is kind of structured like, again, a SQL file format where every column has the same information. So uh, there are many places that use it. One of the example is DSEC2, which is very famous and very common, where you use GTF3 or GFF, sorry, GTF or GFF3 to annotate the file from the count matrix or from the SAM file. Uh, sorry, no, you generate the count matrix from the SAM or BAM file and using the GTF or GFF3 as a way to inform what gene is which region so that you will not uh, either um, count them twice or actually manually count all the transcripts separately because a lot of time uh, even though you have a separate transcript they might belong to the same gene and we'd want them to be combined in DSEC2. So the other very common use case here is not DSEC2, sorry about that, this is IGV. Okay, Integrative uh, Genome Viewer also uses GTF when you want to visualize a genome and how do you how do you want to yeah, visualize the gene and their locations and so on especially we have so many features so the next one will be how they are represent okay so it, the easiest way to actually understand the vff file is to download one yourself an actual one not a dummy one so you can actually go into ensemble.org uh, over here and once you go into the ftp download you should you scroll down a website it should actually bring you to this table and once you reach this table just look for GeneSet, GTF or GFF3 and then download the GFF3 file uh, it will bring you to another FTP and you can kind of download the smallest version that you can have so I will recommend our doses and try to download chromosome 1 so that it's easier for your understanding and stuff okay so uh, so before we go into the real one, it's actually quite useful to look at an example of a standard GFF3 file with the minimum amount of information, okay? Uh, an actual GFF file, GFF3, we need a better name for this, 
giraffe tree, I don't know, a G GFF tree file, it's gonna have more information than this, but it will have two main section. First section is whatever that is above, that is started by the two pound sign or hashtag, as your young people say it, and that will be the what we call a directive, at least from the official documentation, that's what I call it. There'll be a directive and there'll be nine columns following them. Okay, so we're gonna go through them one by one. So first of all is the directive, or I like to call it the metadata, which is the data is related to this inform it's related to the generation of this GFF tree file, but it's not really part of the gene features. Okay, so there are a few things that are official. First of all, the version of the GFF tree, sorry, GFF version, the sequence region and the species. Uh, these are the official directive. There are some that are unofficial, like spec version and processors and so on, as you can see. Everything that is started with two hashtags are um, official, and those then started with one hashtag and one exclamation, exclamation mark that is unofficial, but they can put it in uh, just to indicate extra information for the other people. And when you download the, the file, it's going to be slightly uh, difficult to look at when you look open in Notepad because of the rep text features. So um, it would be great if you uh, hold on to it now and I'll tell you how to open in R later. Okay, but I have pictures of it for you to look at. So once we go down the rec directive, uh, we're going to go into the nine individual columns of GFF3. Remember, there's nine columns. We're going to go through them one by one. And the first one will be the sequence name. I don't know if it's sequence name or something else, but this is the name of the chromosome that is coming from. It is likely that has multiple chromosome, so it can be one, two, three, four, five, six. Or in this case, the sequence uh, is coming from CTG one, two, three. At least th this is where the machine decides to call it. So it will be CTG one, two, three. If it's mitochondria, it might be MT, and if something else, it actually might call it something else. Or sometimes you put a dot. Okay, so different file has different way of representation. Just make sure that if you're using one GFF tree to another version, make sure you do a mutation or you do some uh, editing on it so that they can actually understand each other. So some might have, for example, CHR and some might not. So the second will be the source, which is where this sequence is coming from, where this annotation is coming from. So in this case, uh, the annotation for the Arabidosis Taliana that I downloaded come from a project called Arapod 11, which is actually a project to do a complete re-annotation of the Arabidosis Talia reference genome. Okay, it's published in 2017 and it's actually quite new. So you can see that it's on the second column, we can see Arapod 11 and different species, different project, we have of course different name for their sequence number. So the third one will be a feature. So um, yeah, that's what we meant. So in G GFF3, sometimes we refer to every single line over here as a feature, but the feature can also refer to column three, at least based on the few documentation that I had cross-reference, uh, they are called sometimes the same. So in this case, the column three refers to things like CDS, Exxon, uh, 5 prime UTR, and, and all the other stuff, what is it actually is. Uh, it can be a gene, but gene is usually the longest, so you don't really find much of them inside here. Okay. So, and then the next one will be column four and five, which is where does this location starts and where does this location ends, okay? So the first line here, one, two, four, three, nine, zero, the features, this line represent the features that are starting at this location and at this location, and it's a CDS from our port 11, okay? At least based on this project, and there's more stuff that we're gonna talk about later. So yeah, so the next one will be the score, which is just, a score, I, there's no uh, strong classification of it. It's recommended E-value to use for sequence similarity, but also sometimes P-value used for ab initio gene prediction features and so on. So far for the few GFF3 that I've downloaded, they are all dots. So I, it might not, it might be optional in certain generations and calculations and so on. Okay, so the next one will be the strand. As always, DNA has a positive strand and a negative strand and a positive will be the forward strand and the negative will be the reverse strand and so on. It's just either this one or this one. It's five prime or three prime and so on. Okay, so the column eight will be the, 
a little bit difficult because it's the frame of reference where where does this translation start okay official documentation the phase of the cds feature which relate to codon start in a flat file specification so it might not be accurate if it contains things like internal frame shift and and assembly gaps and so on so just one example over here as you can see uh, if it's nothing and zero uh, it actually starts at the first um, nucleotide the trunk the codon actually start at the first nucleotide okay so if it's not uh, then if it's one if it's if the codon start on the second nucleotide which is one frame shift away then it's a one and two is a two so if it's three, then it's equivalent to zero. So we only have zero, one, two. And in certain thing, if they don't translate, then it will be a dot as well. Something like that. Okay, so the last one is attribute, which is actually most of the information about the certain features. So it can be like parents, name, uh, assembly ID, protein ID, and so on and so forth. So when we do annotation, these are usually the one that we refers to, usually the only the parents. And yeah, every single information that they can want, they will actually put it in. Yeah, so there are many uh, features, the ID, target, gap, and so on. So usually I don't care about it too much. What important thing here is usually the ID that I want to know. For example, this is uh, transcript AT1 G02460.1. So that would be the one that if I do a blast, uh, if I do a prediction, if I do a, a mining, this will be the, the transcript name that I am actually looking for, okay? So one more thing that you have to know is that every single um, GFF file usually start with a first row of what we call a source region features. So when you open a GFF3 file, the first row will contain, what is that called? The, so this is TAR, TAR10, it's chromosome from one to one, five, four, four, seven, eight. So this is this will actually um, what they call uh, start off the project about this GFF tree file contain all the information from this chromosome from this location to this location. So in case that the GFF file get broken, then you can actually break the chromosome into half and generate two GFF tree file, or you can merge GFF tree file into one or some sort of things like that. Okay, so that so the first one define where everything is located so what we call a source region features okay so just after we have done one two three four five six seven eight nine now is to actually put things together and see how does the nine of them comes together so for example here is actually given by their github page on the gff3 official github documentation on the github uh, this is the example that I give us sort of a minimal example how it will look like so for example, we have one gene called Eden and there's a promoter in front of Eden and multiple mRNA that get alternating splice together to form this Eden that can actually be formed as alternative of a Eden gene, for example. So let's just look at how it's located. So just so I, I actually cut out line one because line one define it line one represent the source region of the GFF3, so they're not part of the conversation here but you can look at line two you can see that this is a gene where it's 1000 to 9000 as you can see 1000 here to 9000 here and this name is gene 00001 with the name called eden okay so everything else down there uh, belongs to part of this so you can see the first one is a transcription factor binding site which is a promoter where it's 1000 to 1012 can you see the black Thing over there so it is this ID with this parent means it belongs to this gene okay so that all of the rest are either mRNA or axon so for example the first mRNA will be 1050 which is the biggest one where where it will have so Eden 1 can you see Eden dot 1 so the first one actually depends to Eden dot 1 which covered the whole section but within this Eden dot one, you also have contained multiple features. For example, one zero five zero to, for example, um, one zero five zero to one thousand five over here, line number eight. Can you see? So one thousand to one thousand five actually represent this section of it. So every single possible combination and coverage of the thing will be represented by different line to ensure that 
the the all the different features within this uh, region or within this gene is covered. So let's just look at, for example, line 11, 7,000 to 9,000. Can you see that all of these four sections are the same? So they're only being represented once, but it's an exon 00005 from the parent of mRNA 00001, which is somewhere up here. Yes, this one. And it belongs also to mRNA 0002 and mRNA 0003 and so on. Okay, so all this in the back belongs to all those in the front and and yeah, that, that's about it. Okay, so usually when we do analysis, we don't look at it deep, deeply, but you really want to look at a single gene as how it is being done. Uh, this is a way to do it. So once we're done, let's just go in and try to import one version, which I have to have to change my uh, recording here to display. Yep. Okay. Okay. So what do you do is first of all, you open our studio like everybody else and you download the GFF file that you need to just make sure my face is still around. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it should be. So once you open our studio, which will take a while, you go to import data set on the top, right? Go to import data set and from text import, use the base import. Okay. Once you import the base, it will ramp you to, to find a place where you can find the GFFR that you just downloaded. So usually when it downloads, it comes into a tr, tar.gz file. That's just a compressed, you can think of it as a zip file. So what you do is you can download a program, for example, 7-zip. If not, I believe Windows, you can open it as well and just drag it out into a folder. And within that folder, it should contain your GFF3 file over here. This is 107 megabyte. Uh, it's a bit big, but it should be manageable for R. So you can just press open. And at least for me, for this particular GFF3, everything works nicely. You can see, you can see that the first source region is ready here. We have all the information of the sequence. Oops. We have all the information of the sequence name. We have the project. We have the features. We have the start and end. We have the frame shape. We have the strand, and we have all the attribute of all the individual genes around here. Okay, so yeah, that's a way to visualize it in R, and that's how we can do it in R Studio. So that's about everything. But as a general summary, GFF3 is a file format that consists of one line per features or the gene or the exon or the CDS and so on. And every features is represented by nine different columns of data, uh, plus some optional track definition lines and uh, uh, especially in the attributes where they put a lot more information in. Okay, so these are the nine of them, set ID, source, type, uh, start, end, score, strand, phase, frame, or attributes and so on. Okay, so another summary, it is also wrapped with directive, version, sequence, region, and species. A uh, single gene is usually represented by many lines of feature in a Java tree. Uh, when I say wrap the directive, it, remember directive is the metadata above. Okay, the last one is more the information are located in the attribute column of the features. So once we're done, that is all I need to say about GFF3. Something that uh, you have to ask yourself, maybe in the, since you are on the end of the video, how many columns that a GFF3 file have? What is the difference between GTF, GF3? What's some common features? What's the meaning of 0, 1, 2 in the face and frame column? How do you import GF3 into the R Studio? Set ID to refers to what of the organism? And the last two, I'm gonna leave it open and I'm not gonna ask it. So what I hope you to do is actually, if you know the answer, put it in the comments down below and check if it's correct. And if you don't know the answer, also check the comment down below. I would say post it down below as well and see if you're correct or not. Somebody definitely would love to correct you on the internet. And if you are still watching after such a long video, uh, we are very close to 5,000. So subscribe would be nice. If you can share to your friend, that would be also nice, especially for people that are also working on this sort of file. Hopefully it will be helpful to them. So for now, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you um, know a little bit more about GFF3 than you have for this. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye.